Max, we are about to have a panel that explores how captivating audiences is imported using innovative strategies. So allow me to introduce a panel titled The Rise of Ex Experimental Marketing, Embracing New Realities. Please welcome on stage our moderator, Mayank Ramesh Bheta. Put your hands together in a round of applause. He is the founder and managing director of Mifit Enterprises, also known as Balanced Chemistry, along with, sorry, excuse me, John, John Ozarowski, the creative strategist and partner of Lens That. C.S. Shathan, the strategic consultant of I Speak Corporate Services, LTD. <laughs> Mr. Ankur Pajari, the CEO and founder of Alta Immersive Tech Solutions, LLC. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Rajib Chaudhary, the Strategy and Transformation Consultant at Ajax Logistics Services. I'll just change the order. Thanks, uh, Nora. But we'll change the order. We'll make him the moderator. That's what we have decided amongst ourselves. So uh, we'll take it by that. Uh, yes, so, thank you so much, Mayank. Uh, hi, I'm Ankur Pujari. I uh, run a company called the Heka Labs which is a part of ultra immersive technology. So we are a creative technology company and I've been into uh, strategy and marketing for almost 15 years. I've worked across Singapore, Southeast Asia and India. And uh, yeah, I'm here to you know, kind of share my experience in the whole experiential space and how it's gonna you know, change the way we uh, you know, interact with brands, uh, with the uh, evolution of technology. So yeah, I would li like everyone to just, you know, kind of just get into the introduction. Thank you, Ankur. Uh, so my name is Mayank Mehta, and you have been seeing me past two, two days now. Uh, so basically, uh, I run a 360-degree marketing agency called Balanced Chemistry in Mumbai, India. And uh, my personally, I'm a master's from London, and I have also completed my business analytics from IIT Bombay. and. I'm passionate about sales and marketing, and that's what I do. And we are working currently in India with uh, all the uh, conglomerates and uh, MNCs, as well as we have got few American brands, and very soon we'll be in the US market as well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Shantan. I represent a company called I Speak, and uh, we are known as business doctors in the community for three simple reasons. Obviously, we help them scale their ventures. We help them elevate their marketing style and strategy, and we make sure their brand positioning is well. So currently, we are in 18 different countries. We escalated pretty strong, and majorly, we are into market research and helping them grow. And I'm really happy to be part of this panel with gentlemen over here. And I'm sure this can be of a great value add session because we are discussing something which can make sure it adds a lot of value in everyone's mindset. Over to you. Hi, uh, this is Rajiv Chaudhary. I started my career with uh, DHL and in the customer service. So I bring a little bit of customer experiential part element on that. And then uh, I was uh, uh, across different other functions, uh, including marketing uh, and also finance, uh, based out of Brussels, uh, global head office, uh, and in Singapore. Uh, so I was also playing a role of uh, translating customer value with, with the right level of pricing which helped uh, as a company, DHL globally, we turned around to a profitable for the loss making to uh, setting the right standards on profitability. Uh, thereafter, I started my own company, uh, Biz Excel Consulting, uh, helping companies transform, turn around uh, for companies around the Middle East, also some of the global companies as well. And thereafter, since last uh, eight odd years, I was involved with logistics companies in Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, from scratch, uh, we built a brand, uh, unknown brand to a number one logistics player in Saudi Arabia. Currently with uh, Ajax Logistics Service, part of Ajlan Holding, um, Ajlan and Brothers Holding, also on the same path of uh, creating va uh, value and, uh, and, and growing at a market leading speed. Uh, my name is Jan, I'm with Lensdat Creative Studio. Uh, you might have seen me here uh, the last couple of days. We do extended reality experiences in our creative studio. Uh, 
been doing it for the past seven years, uh, but in marketing technology for over 10 years. So I'm, I'm going to bring a little bit of the technology side to the discussion here uh, of the super experienced gentlemen from different uh, angles of business. Amazing. Thank you so much for the introduction. I think we have an amazing uh, and a diverse group. Uh, so without, uh, you know, sort of uh, getting into anything, I, I, the, the topic, you know, is about experiential marketing. And, you know, the way I see experiential marketing is it's a pretty broad subject. And uh, what I would like to start this conversation uh, with is how do you define experiential marketing in your context, in your geography, and in your experience? So let's start with that, uh, you know, in, in order to, you know, kind of throw some more perspective to the subject. Yeah, thanks. So experiential marketing, uh, basically, uh, it's an engagement marketing where brands go to customers. Customers don't come to brands, first of all. Uh, many brands would like to have, before they launch, even in the market, they would like to have first-hand information from the customers, uh, you know, while doing a product research that what they found about the product, they liked about the product, and where, which are the areas of improvement, okay? This is one segment of uh, experiential marketing, and the other one is where certain brands are little conscious. They want to know uh, first-hand information from the customers, and they want to uh, highlight the USP and want the customers to be advocate of their own brands while putting up them on digital rail uh, and you know uh, giving them an idea, their opinion, or speak about it without making making them as an influencer about their own brand. So that's what, uh, in short, I would like to say an experiential marketing is all about. Yes, over to you, sir. Maybe I'll put it uh, slightly different, connecting with what you are telling. Maybe experience is all about how we get connected, as you rightly said. But when we are connecting, I believe there's an ingredient which changes the entire story, and that's emotion. So when we are creating experience, a lot of them end up stating that I have added value. But if that value is not being consumed by the one who is actually supposed to consume it, then we are ending up with a mess. So to make sure that connection is built, if emotional factor is also being added. Now we have seen a lot of ads in this form of marketing where we end up conveying like, if this message went on viral, if this information was accepted by many, that is because they got connected with an emotion. It might be any extreme factor of emotion which can be handled, but that emotion made the difference. So in case if that emotional part is being part of the you know, core of our marketing, I think that can change. So in the product research, when we are doing it, we also assess the consumer psychology because that makes a difference of what emotion can trigger. What is that factor a consumer is most heard of, remember, and also he'll pass it on. I think if that factor can be considered, experience. I see experiential marketing from customer perspective, purely. Uh, if you look into the customer touch points, yeah, for example, in logistics, it starts from billing to sales to customer call center and customs clearance and all the different touch points. It's important to understand what creates value. What's the ROI? What's the value driver which is more important, most important to you? So I can think about the DHL example. Uh, we believe that a big proportion of the value is created from big customers, global customers. We deliver across the globe. So for us, th those key accounts are very important and we need to implement experiential marketing around, for example, the F1 events where we invite the global customers and, for example, the World Rugby uh, tournaments and various other such tournaments, even in football. So, so those are some of the uh, events in that we implemented. However, it depends on the industry sector you are in. And first thing we have to ask, what drives value for my company or in my industry? And look into different customer touch points and understand which customer touch point that's the real value trigger that you need to press the button. And accordingly, then think around what marketing events or what experiential marketing activity will help trigger value from that touch point. This is how I see uh, cus customer experience driven experience marketing. These are some beautiful insights. I especially can relate to what Shantan said about, you know, the emotional side, you know, building that emotional connection and coming from a digital brand communication 
ex uh, professional experience. Uh, only I can add on top of what you gentlemen said. Com brand communication, in my experience, has always been a two-way channel, unlike traditional media where you just have the brand speaking to the consumer. With digital communication, social media, Internet 2.0, the communication between a brand and a consumer has always been a two-way thing. And then, so the brands always have struggled to catch the user's attention, to catch the consumer's attention. You had to create content that was captivating, or some called it thumb-friendly. So when you just scroll the feed with your thumb, you have to create content that catches attention. And I think we've had video, uh, we've had photo, uh, we've had Twitters, Facebooks, and so on to catch the user's attention. I think experiential, having actual physical connections with the brand and with the brand story and with, and with the brand value, be it, be it a hands-on trial, be it a, some nice um, uh, branded event. You know, experiential is the new field that I think brands should conquer to catch the user's attention and to convey that whole message that the brand has built on that emotional side. You know, the product is going to defend itself if it's good, but the communication isn't going to be memorable and meaningful if a brand cannot deliver its message through an experience. And those experiences are what you gentlemen mentioned. It can be many things. It's just a new area for the brand to connect with the consumer in a meaningful way, in a physical way, rather than just staying online or staying as an ad on the TV. So some very, very thought-provoking perspectives here. And I would just like to, you know, sort of, uh, um, uh, in a way, summarize that the, the key words that I grabbed from this was that, you know, it, it all starts from the consumer um, and the business objective that that, that the particular brand or, or you know, can, uh, company wants to achieve. And then that has to be translated into an emotional message that a consumer can be engaged into. And the beauty about experiential is that, you know, it's not a one-way communication from the brand, but a way where a consumer can actually touch, feel, and, you know, even interact with the brand. So no matter what you, you know, kind of uh, um, come out with an idea or the execution of an experiential idea, it's all about the connection that you form with the consumer and a very, very genuine connection. Uh, so, yeah, from, from there, I think, uh, you know, one interesting thing uh, that I would like to, you know, kind of ask is that, well, we've been in the industry uh, and, and, you know, um, uh, how do you see evolution of this experiential marketing, you know, from kiosks and events to, you know, it's getting more and more technologically, you know, into the immersive space where uh, VR and, you know, uh, all those things are, you know, kind of take, takes place a bit. So what's your take, Mayank, on this? So uh, very good question. So uh, we have seen experiential marketing where, uh, you know, it, in a traditional marketing, I mean, few years back, I mean, uh, almost a decade ago, uh, we must have seen that, you know, uh, people were just going and exploring the opportunity uh, of uh, uh, going to a brand, checking out a brand, and there were not uh, many options available, or maybe the, uh, they were not reaching out to the options, okay? So what brand has thought, you know, rather than a consumer come to us, let us go to the consumer. So what they've started is they started giving the experiences. Now these experiences were basically, they identified where these experiences can be given. So they started with a kiosk, okay? So example, to just to give you a very basic example, uh, McDonald's, if you go in the McDonald's now, they say like, you know, you cannot order at the counter, you do it at the kiosk, you place your order and you come to us just to take the order. That makes your life easy, okay? Number two, uh, how many, most of you have been passed through an immigration office today, right? Yesterday or today, where what happened is you scanned your passport, what happened? It says like some of them said, uh, uh, you know, uh, immigration check required and then you go uh, to the other side of it, okay? And then you see that, you know, the traditional way of immigration happening, okay? What has happened is people are trying to implement technology and making an experience for the people so that, you know, uh, people do remember. So whenever you travel countries, okay, you see some technologies, what you feel is that, you know, how fast the immigration happened, okay? How fast, you know, you we were out of it. And some people have a good takeaways out of that. So when you go to an event, there is a pop-up stores. So if you go to a Nike pop-up stores or Adidas pop-up stores, you just see all this, uh, you check out your shoes, you know, you do not have to wear them all the time because it sometimes gets very bored. Boring, you know, you have to remove your shoes and try, keep on trying them. 
So then, you know, there, there was a uh, uh, virtual reality which came into picture, which was developed further into augmented reality. And now we have holograms and many other things which has been evolved. So, you know, technology is moving and we are moving with the technologies. And this is how, you know, uh, the future is that we do not need to go to the store. The store will come to you in the form of a technology. And that's how the people will get an experience, if not through a personal, but, you know, they will get an idea, which I think, uh, you know, uh, Jan will be uh, able to describe much better than because he is already into augmented and VR. I think you stole all my points. I'm not going to build no, on no, that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have much more technical to speak about it. Yeah, thanks. Um, so do you mind if I skip the orders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jan, can you highlight on that? Uh, Mayank, you, you, just, you, you touched the most important thing. You know, the, the technology is galloping away. You know, it's, it's changing every day. Uh, use technology as part of your experiential marketing with meaning in mind and with value for the, for the consumer. Uh, it cannot just, like in my presentation on Monday, I tried to stress it a couple of times. Don't just do technology for the sake of using technology in your communication. Don't keep it as a stupid gimmick. It has to be meaningful, you know, because, because those emotions that you mentioned, you know, you, you pretty much have only one chance to build a positive connection, a positive, you know, emotion. You can build it through a through an order process, you know, ordering food at McDonald's. You know, if you if your user interface is bad, people are going to have a bad experience. They're going to remember your brand in a bad in a bad way. You yeah, know? that's a very powerful point, Jan. And I think uh, technology is just an enabler, and you can the technology will keep evolving. And I think uh, uh, what people connect to with experiential marketing is the emotion. It's the connect that we create, and that comes with uh, emotion and storytelling that 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 kind of revolves around it or encompasses it, and technology just becomes an outer layer for it. So yeah, I think that's a very very powerful point. And from there, I think you know one of the discussions we were having uh, prior to this uh, um, uh, panel discussion was that you know how do uh, you know like you're going in the market, you're going in in the U.S. market as well as you know in the India market. What are some of the challenges that you're, you know, kind of foreseeing or, or facing with the clients today when it comes to experiential marketing? Do you see that as a, you know, certain challenges that are there? Yes. Uh, first of all, the acceptance, because you know what, uh, there are a few brands in the market uh, who just wants immediate returns. They, they, they feel that, you know, they throw out the product in the market and they want the sales uh, to be, you know, done quickly with the snap of a finger and they want the repeat orders, okay? But there are some brands who are there to stay in the market. You know, what they think is we need to invest our time because slowly and gradually the customers will get educated on the quality of the product. They will understand the need of a product. So what happens is people come to us, they, they have a, uh, you know, purpose-driven marketing. So people come to us and ask, like, you know, uh, we need to design a, a campaign, experiential marketing campaign, where the objective is uh, lead generation. So if there is a lead generation a marketing campaign, okay, then definitely the idea what we provide them is a completely traditional marketing thing. But if we need to do it in a longer way, you know, then we propose them how to, uh, you know, uh, do some kind of a carnival or some kind of a family event or something where we invite a lot of people and they come on your uh, booth, they enjoy, they have the experience of, uh, you know, checking out the product and they, and they give their name, numbers, and then you slowly and gradually, you know, attack them uh, on the social media and then eventually it converts into a sale. But people who are not that patient enough, you know, uh, to do, go through all the entire processes, for them the technology becomes a difficult. For example, I met uh, one of our clients in India, uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't like to take a name, but uh, they are a very big uh, uh, fashion apparel and they are based in Dubai as well. So they asked me, you know, uh, the marketing generally faced a problem where the client says, can you think something out of the box? Now, we don't know what is out of the box, actually, okay? Everything, what we think, we think is out of the box, but for them, it is like, you know, you have to be something different from others. So we try to design a campaign where uh, we try to show them a, you know, hologram, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of a night. For example, at Burj Khalifa, when you see the lights on the 31st night, uh, you know, you see all the graphics and everything going around and you feel, you know, people all across the world come and they say, wow, what an experience it has been, okay? So we try to do something similar uh, where we try to say, like, we're going to have a hologram of fashion show, 
with your apparels and at the end of the fashion show which is going to be seen uh, you know in the dark night you know when people are in the on the one particular day for example valentines day or some or some other day you know we're going to uh, choose a day and we're going to have this uh, fashion show going on with the hologram and at the end we're going to you know publish your name they said wow brilliant idea locked in everything fine but when you give them a costing it's going to cost you this much you know they are like okay can you come down to something else because we cannot afford this so the budget is always an issue with the client okay they want mercedes but you know the price they want to pay is for suzuki so <laughs> it, no, i'm serious about that and i'm sure being a marketer yeah, everybody so feels i'm sure this. that's a very pertinent question yeah. and i think um, yan you have been successfully creating case studies in this space so what's your success recipe here I think it's the flexibility and the scalability. I, you know, the, one of the points that I also try to convey is that you can use extended reality being a big brand, a small brand, a finance brand, a fashion brand. Uh, you just need to be, you know, get creative with, with it, but always, you know, keep in mind that it has to be meaningful. That's, that's pretty much all I have to say about experiential <laughs> marketing, you know. But, you know, this is just a technological, you know, side of, side of the story. And I'll be, I'll be happy to hear your guys, so uh, I, you know, I think, uh, story about how experiential is changing across the years and what's the future for it. Yeah, you, you mentioned about challenges. Uh, one of the challenges uh, we face about technology, the acceptance of technology from customer's perspective. Uh, Sometimes it's, it's back to basics, to simple things. Uh, I, I could recall uh, in Ajax Logistics uh, recently, it was uh, last week, a customer from fashion industry, and he, what he cares about is products, how are we handling, so it's nice, valuable clothes, and uh, we could display the sorting system. Some. Some of our uh, competitors are handling it differently with the pile of mountain, and we show them how we are handling it. A simple sorting machine, we, that's a bit emotional for the customer. And it depends uh, which customer, what's your target customer. If it is business, like fashion company, and it's, you show them how we handle their shipments, for example, the touch, emotional touch. If, if they are customers, uh, the uh, final end customers, consumers, you show them, uh, how we interact with them, the customer interface, the touch points, how we help them clear shipments clear, uh, quickly, uh, or, we, or the call center. We have a challenge now. Should we implement a call bot uh, which automatically speaks, or the human uh, personnel who talk to them? So there is a fine balance we need to strike uh, between uh, technology uh, and this uh, uh, emotion factor. Uh, I still believe uh, somewhere down the line, a hard-powered approach, uh, it drives value. Uh, and we have to be mindful of that. I think we'll, have, we'll let Santan also add his perspective. Yes, to maybe that. I'll add on this way. I believe the challenge is very simple. The difference between a successful and a failed marketing is very simple with this statement. The one who knows what he knows and the one who also knows what he doesn't know, that is all difference which happens in marketing. Majority of the time, the one marketing, experiential marketing especially, it fails because they don't know what they don't know. So in that case, they end up failing and they'll not be able to replicate. I'm sure you would have heard of uh, this book, which is written by Reid Hoffman, which speaks about Blitzkrieg. Heard of it, anyone? OK, great. So Blitzkrieg is something like what happened with uh, Hitler when he went on, waged a war against Europe and Africa, and he was able to win because of this term called as blitzkrieg. Because until then, we all knew about guerrilla marketing, but this went beyond that. Because guerrilla warfare was completely different on a random and a strategic front to break it. But in the case of blitzkrieg, it was a lightning war. He used the tactic wherein, when I'm unable to defeat the entire warfare, let me take one focus, where all my army, tanks, defense, everything, let me focus on one single aspect, which is the strongest point on the enemy. He deployed everything with the smallest force and deployed the enemy. And I'm sure within no time, he you know, won the war. So that same strategy is used by today's marketing guys, where Reid Hoffman, the one who is an investor of a Facebook and also a co-founder of uh, LinkedIn, he told the warfare which went on then is a real case of marketing in today's sense, wherein doesn't matter what kind of business you are running, your entire focus of marketing has to be touching one touch point of a consumer. Make sure that is so impactful that nothing can stop you after that. So the question is, are we doing it? So that's a challenge from that's my a, perspective. That's a very, very sharp point about impactful. And I think uh, moving on to the, you know, the, uh, 
the, the second part of our panel discussion, which is embracing new realities. Uh, how can we create more impact uh, you know, at, a, at a very large scale using these uh, the, the new realities that are coming up, and, and especially in context of technology that you know we're going to uh, we, we are moving towards. So, what's your take on on you know how, how this whole new realities will emerge with the new technology coming at play? So, uh, to answer your question, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, as a marketer, we discuss uh, the first point we all ask uh, to our uh, client is objective, and second is who is our TG. If the TG is millennial, Gen Z, then obviously the experiential marketing has to uh, embrace new technology because now Gen Z and millennials cannot live without technology. Let's face this, okay? And the technology has to be, as uh, Jan said, it has to be, uh, you know, very friendly. I mean, it, it, it cannot be complicated, you know? So it has to be such a user-friendly that, you know, today's TikTok world, today it's, a, a, you know, a Snapchat world, okay? Uh, I don't know how many kids know their, uh, you know, uh, storybook or not, but they know how to use Snapchat, you know. They don't remember anything, but they remember how to use the filters, you know. Uh, and sometimes we, as an adult, we have to go to them and we have to sometimes ask them, you know, how to remove this adult, or, uh, this filter or, you know, how to uh, erase this or save this photo. Sometimes it happens to me as well. So what happens is these people are ready for the technology. Now the... As he said, uh, you know, the question is how simplify, uh, uh, you know, we can how simplify uh, technology is, you know, to use. If there is any complex uh, thing uh, involved in that, you know, people will not accept it. And we have to keep on revolving. So now, if you remember sports, for example, if I have to take a very, uh, in this room, a majority of them are from like India or other part, uh, you know, of India. So, you know, cricket as a game. So many of a time we see, uh, you know, now before even the batsmen come to the crease for playing physically, we see that there is this entire VR on uh, with the, you know, ex-players putting on their glasses and they are given the statistics and they are they are playing with the VRs and it's, it's an entertainment which goes on before the, even the match starts. You know, that's a 